about half a year ago, I made this video. And a while ago, it received a decent boost in viewership. I was wondering why for about five minutes before I read this email. Luna is on Windows now. I immediately stole my girlfriend's laptop, don't tell her, and got tested. Along the way, I'll be sharing some general updates on my Luna experience with you. Since you've clicked on this video, you probably know what Luna is. But if not, here's a quick rehash. Luna is Universal Audio's very own DAW, with its main selling point being its top-notch integrated console emulation. The first good news is, like its Mac cousin, Luna is free. No trial, no nothing. You can get a full-fledged DAW from a major trusted brand in the audio space for free. Also like on Mac, free ends pretty quickly if you want many of Luna's unique selling features. But the $300 price tag the Pro version commands is not out of line with that of other DAWs. And the emulations you get are top notch. On this front, there's also an update to be shared. In my last video, one of my major complaints was not including these features with UAD's Spark subscription. And unfortunately, my suspicion turned out to be correct. While Spark includes many of the standalone plugins that UAD's extension system features, if you want to use the extensions as intended, you'll have to cough up $300 regardless of whatever else you own. Even then, the Neve Summing extension included in the Luna Pro trial will not be available to you, unless you own UAD hardware and you're willing to spend some extra money there too. While this is unfortunate for me, it hasn't stopped me from using Luna as the workflow improvements I mentioned in my original video outweigh the added cost, particularly as it is a one-time fee, not a subscription. Luna on Windows has, in my limited time with it, felt exactly the same as on Mac, with all the ups and downsides of that. Many of the criticisms I initially levied still hold true, which is actually a sticking point. Luna does not feel dumb. As outlined in my initial review, it's lacking some core features. And while I appreciate trying to expand the user base, developing for another platform will not make it easier to add those features in the future. Additionally, now that I have been using Luna full-time for over a year, I've found a few bugs to report. Whether some of these are actual bugs or just par for the cores is up for debate, but I'll mention them anyway. The first, and by far biggest issue, is GPU utilization. From my testing, this holds true both on Mac and Windows. But it is a little more noticeable on my MacBook, as the included graphics card is weaker. UAD's headline feature of analog summing emulation is very taxing on the system. At first, this seems quite understandable. It's emulating a very complex process and in addition, there's many other instances of plugins loaded up on the session as well. Dig deeper though, and you'll find yourself with a bit of mystery on your hand. My MacBook is equipped with an i9 processor, and while it isn't new, it's still a powerful machine. When I first ran into Crackling, I checked Luna's performance meter, and sure enough, it was in the red, exceeding 100% even. All right, let's increase buffer size and we're okay, right? Well, no. No matter how high, or in fact low, I said it, the damn meter wouldn't budge. Now I was confused, so I checked the utilization as reported by the MacBook. The i9 wasn't even breaking a sweat. A session with over 50 tracks, each of course with console and tape emulation, and a few with additional processing, and it barely hit 50% usage. None of the individual cores were maxed out either. Checking RAM yielded the same result. Not that it wasn't used, but I had plenty available and it should not be causing issues. So, as you do after experiencing technical difficulties, Google was my next stop and it provided some clues. The UAD forum includes multiple threads with users reporting the exact same issue I had. And it also provided an explanation. Luna is GPU hungry. In fact, something specifically is GPU hungry. Why? I have no clue, but recommended solutions include removing second displays or quite simply not loading up as many instances of Neve or API summing. In my personal testing, the Neve summing seems to be the bigger culprit. 
but both seem to tax the system a fair bit. Removing the second display didn't do all that much, but mine's only running at 1080p, and many users that reported better performance with the display removed were running 4K displays. It's also not really a viable solution for me, as working with a single display impacts workflow negatively. For me, removing instances of summing was the only way to get the session working again. While it is annoying, it's not all that bad. By default, Luna loads up summing instances for any bus you create, whether it's a reverb send or a summing bus. By removing them from reverbs and smaller summing buses like multi-mic sources, I could easily get the session below 80% on the performance meter. What exactly that meter measures is still a mystery to me. Another bug I have now encountered multiple times has to do with automation and, as of recently, fades. In certain projects, drawing additional automation or just in the levels flat out refuses to work. This happens after some automation has been written on a track and simply cannot be fixed, or at least I have not found any way to fix it. You can still write automation by touch, which is my preferred method anyway, but not being able to adjust automation levels quickly is still a massive hindrance. And when I say it can't be fixed, I mean that. I have sessions from May that still do not work properly. Once a session starts experiencing this, there's nothing, no way to get it unstuck, short of rebuilding it from scratch. The same thing has more recently happened to me with fades as well, although this has only happened once. While I've not experienced this problem with the Windows version, I suspect it still occurs. It's too sporadic for me to make sure though. A quick Google finds references to this problem as far back as 2021. The same goes for the aforementioned GPU issues. So it's a little disappointing to still find these issues years down the line. That being said, UAD isn't alone in this regard, as Pro Tools users will likely know. On the plus side, stability is still great. I have yet to experience my first crash, and while there have been other bugs, they are very rare. Whether this holds true for Windows as well is hard for me to judge, as I have not used it for as long. I did experience one crash of sorts, but that was due to connection loss, which leads me to my biggest real-world issue. Luna is free, but you do have to download UA Connect and link your iLock account. In and of itself, this wouldn't be a huge deal, but I don't really understand why this is necessary when the basic software is free. After I tested it for a bit, I decided to test if it would run even if the PC did not meet minimum spec. I can gladly report it did. Loading extensions would obviously tax it, but as long as you're only tracking, it ran just fine. The PC in question is my life tracking system, a seven-year-old gaming laptop with Windows 10. As I've been struggling with Reaper, I thought I might as well give it a try in the real world and decided to track a show. This was where the problem started, as not every live venue will allow for an internet connection, and cell phone reception wasn't great. I decided to set it up with a hotspot, regardless, as calling home to check in every now and then should work just fine. About halfway through soundcheck, I noticed there was a problem. Luna wasn't running anymore. And I don't mean it stopped tracking. It had flat out closed the program. Not only that, the second half of the sound check was gone. And I knew I had started tracking that part. Turns out I would lost Wi-Fi connection and instead of a warning message, it decided it was time to shut it all down. Now there's a way to avoid this problem by using a physical iLock. But I don't want to do this for various reasons. I managed to track the show and as long as it doesn't lose connection, it will run just fine. But the next big surprise waited for me the next day. As I tried starting Luna on my MacBook, it told me it couldn't find my license. In fact, it couldn't find any UAD license on my MacBook. UA Connect refused to work at first. Then after a reboot, it told me I had to activate the license. And only after clicking that button for one plugin did it start working again? That hassle just isn't worth it. So while I love Luna in the studio, Reaper will suffice as a glorified tape machine. 
I do have an upcoming video on that, so stay tuned. What's the verdict then? Luna has its quirks. Yes, it even has some real problems. But at the end of the day, my original verdict holds true. If you are mixing in the box and you want that console feeling, Luna is for you.